our first speaker for tonight, who we are very, very excited to have and who I do not think needs an elaborate introduction, Secretary Pollack. Okay, so, um, good evening. Everyone in this room is interested in how we can transform transportation, particularly to give people more options for walking, biking, and using transit. But I sit in a unique position to try and affect that change from inside. I'm often asked whether I have a theory or a theme in the work we've been doing at MassDOT and the MBTA for the last three years. The answer is yes, and that's what I'm here to talk about tonight. First, we should all remind ourselves how much change really needs to happen. Statewide, about 20% of all trips are made by walking and biking, another 8% by transit, and that seems good, except they're mostly short trips. So if you look at miles, not trips, and miles is what predicts greenhouse gases, over 90% of all miles in the state are driven. Um, so whether you're interested in tackling climate change or changing travel behavior or both, we need transformative change in Massachusetts. So how does change happen? My favorite theory of change comes from the inventor and futurist Buckminster Fuller, who used to tell people to be a trim tab. What did he mean? Trim tabs are small um, surfaces connected to the trailing edge of a control surface, like a, lot, a rudder on an ocean liner. How do you change the direction of an enormous ship, like the Queen Mary? The rudder itself is too big for any single person to change. The trim tab, however, is small and easy for the captain to shift. Small movements by a trim tab create a low pressure zone that pulls the rudder around. Buckminster Fuller believed that anyone could act as a trim tab, recognizing the potential downstream changes that would occur through the influence of small but high leverage actions over time, pointing us in a new direction. When I became secretary, honestly, it kind of felt like turning the Queen Mary to figure out how to change MassDOT and the MBTA and the actions of the 351 cities and towns that control our transportation system. The question was, what would be my trim tabs? One thing I knew, and Governor Baker says all the time, is that people are policy, which is why we have Jackie DeWolf as MassDOT's first director of sustainable mobility, and Michelle Danilla as our complete streets engineer, and Pete Sutton in planning, working on the bike ped plan. More importantly, or as importantly, we have bicycle pedestrian coordinators in each of the six highway districts because that's where most of the designing and decision making really happens. And as Jackie found out when we had NACTO in to do a workshop on designing streets for transit, there is genuine interest throughout MassDOT in doing a better job of designing streets that work for everyone, not just cars. Changing people and culture and expertise is um, one trim tab for changing my agencies. But I want to spend the rest of my brief time before the music starts talking about another theme that shapes my thinking about how to make transformative and lasting change in the ability of our transportation system to provide more, better, more equitable, and safer travel options. What is that theme? Networks. We know that transportation systems work as networks and fail as networks, yet we tend to focus on projects, not networks. Quite simply, a network is a collection of nodes and links. Nodes are places where strips start and end, like residential neighborhoods or employment centers. Projects usually involve better nodes. Better nodes are important, especially if they're the kind of mobility hubs envisioned by Go Boston 2030. But the reality is, more choices, we need more links. This seems obvious, but we have some transportation networks that aren't really networks. And the reason is they are missing links. In recent years, we've built lots of great pieces of bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure, whether as standalone projects or under the Healthy Transportation Compact, which requires building bicycle and pedestrian facilities into MassDOT roadway projects. But when it comes to bicycle and pedestrian facilities, our networks are missing links. We would never build roads that go nowhere or simply end. If we are serious about walking and biking as travel options, the same needs to be true for sidewalks and bike lanes and multi-use paths. Let's explore a few examples of how we at MassDOT and the T are trying to make better networks. We'll start in Northampton, Massachusetts. Northampton is committed to creating a real bicycle network. Currently, their rail and multi-use trail network is accessible to 70% of their residents, and their goal is to hit 80%. But the network was missing a key link. It was divided by a railroad. The Norwatuck Rail Trail ended on the east side of the railroad, and the other side of the tracks was another part of the rail network. 
The train tracks are actively used by the Amtrak Vermonter and Pan Am freight trains. So there's an official detour, and you're supposed to go south on Market Street and over to the North Street Railroad underpass and north again on King Street. So guess what actually happens? People cut a hole in the fence and carry their bikes over the active rail tracks. Um, this is known in transportation planning as a desire line. Um, so the solution is what you see on the bottom, a $4.4 million underpass that we just finished that now creates a more than 50-mile network of bicycle trails on both sides. Expensive, perhaps, for a single project, but a bargain for creating a 50-mile bicycle network. Buses also work or fail in networks, and the MBTA's bus network is currently failing to live up to its potential, even though it carries nearly 400,000 passengers every day. Many of the links in the network are crowded. Many of them are unreliable. We heard at the control board meeting Monday, which was devoted to buses, that when you exclude our 15 high ridership um, uh, key bus routes and the silver line, the on-time performance of the remaining 60% of the system is barely over 50% on time. By this time next year, I am delighted that the MBTA will have in place a comprehensive game plan for fixing each one of its 175 bus routes. One of the tools that will be used in this unprecedented data-driven effort is a new way to assess how a given bus route or link in the network contributes to the success of the entire network. So while the team will be fixing 175 routes, what the planning effort will actually produce is a much, much better network. Now, as most folks in this room know, the pedestrian plan MassDOT is currently preparing is also focused on networks rather than on individual projects. But over 90% of the sidewalks in the Commonwealth actually belong to cities and towns, not MassDOT. So we made a mid-course correction and created a much-needed municipal resource guide for walkability. Don't worry, the statewide plan is still coming out. But this way, we'll have multiple tools for improving pedestrian networks at both the local and regional level. Like sidewalks, most streets in Massachusetts are also owned by cities and towns, about three quarters. So the real way to change how those streets accommodate pedestrians, cyclists, and transit users is to change how cities and towns think about their streets. Less than two years ago, there were only 14 cities and towns of 351 in the state that had formally adopted a complete streets policy. We designed a technical assistance and funding program with the audacious goal of ultimately getting every one of the 351 cities and towns in Massachusetts to commit to complete streets. And we are well on the way. By year three of the program next year, we should have nearly 150 cities and towns with not just complete streets policies, but actual priority plans for where to invest, up from 14, less than two years ago. That doesn't come off my time. <laughs> um, indeed, um, when, the when Smart Growth America in 2016 graded complete streets policies across the nation, over 80% of those that got an A came from one state, our state. This transformation, this trim tab, two years, less than $15 million. That's what a trim tab looks like. I hope this gives you some insight into what we're doing at MassDOT and the MBTA. In closing, I need to give a shout out to all the incredible men and women at both agencies who are our most valuable trim tabs, who work hard every day to make our transportation networks better, more sustainable, and more equitable. They, and you, are why I am so certain that transformative change is not only possible, but happening every day. Thank you.